Baradayan Bisaya. He alone shall Baradaya Tanana Kuvila say. And we worship. Oh, believe it. Above all other gods. And we laid all you. And we worship. Oh, believe it. I'd like you to mean what you're saying. Mean what you're saying. Above all other gods. And we. Oh, glorious God, we praise your name. Oh, glorious God. We praise your name. Eratala beratalika sevelo hotabais. Imo shati kapela sotelana ya. Eleros kapela do. Oh, glorious God. We praise your name. Yeah.
your name. Lord, we lay it all before you. We lay it all before you. Oh, believe 
Keteloza Ali Barada Barash Rape Ketebe Ketebele And we worship Thank <laughs> you. 
it says casting all your cares, casting all the burdens. If there's something you need to release to the Lord, just release it right, right now. Release it right now. There's something you need to let go. Just let it go. The Lord is here. His presence is might in the midst of his people. There is something that must go. Let it go. Let it go. We must feel better after we meet with him. We must feel lighter after we meet with him. We must be made whole after we meet with him. We lay it on. We lay it on. A Kamana Suzali Rapeketa Pelelias Apelete Bokotomanai. We are Barada Bagadish Rapagata Bragada Barada Leprakata Gada. We receive your peace. We receive your healing. We receive your direction. We receive your clarity. We receive your ease. Ela petele baruta ba, mato brekete baruza ba, repekete peluka be, iya baraga ba ya temeno, rakoto perua kapa. Ema ya tama na 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 ko, iya rabaga da shala. Let it out, 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 let it out. Ela kefele so brekata, ela brekete be kapoko be, iya brekete be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, precious Father. Me brude ga bella bella nezu za graskatai ki belende sete kafeta manta le prete pele kruna manda su grasketo lohosi u shabala ke fuzesi me prete kete le bella di shabande kovahai kubeli shakahadesh yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord now there is a wind of the spirit that I just feel. It's a wind. Lord, I ask right now, that this wind blows through this house. It blows away what be not of the Father. Lord, I ask right now, the wind of the spirit the wind of the spirit every attachment that be not of God let the wind blow it away Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ah, ya kapele nesi. Kele vele zuzara hatish. Mi prete leble ne kosai. La rute gade brega de bohasi. Ma parada ba shande gohusa. Le parada ba ko shanda mahakebo. Le preke chepe le preki tapo. E ma poruka pande pele. E se preke cheme ne poko. Ripa katam de fete poka siya. E li kapora gohasiya. Yes Lord. Yes Lord. Yes Lord. 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ayatemi nebo ho shada hasi. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ela pera de berasa na mahode hatai. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ela se bohotai. you father thank you father thank you father Yes, Lord. And we ask this morning that you continue with your move and your touch. That not a single person came in here connected remain the same eli brada bala de behse e baraka bala hatima na kofe higasai kule badia kubaladia koradia pelima ne kose balai korada bahane mele bala 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I ask, Lord, keep moving, keep touching, keep delivering, keep healing. As your word comes forth, let it pierce situations, conditions. Let not a single person return dry. Let not a single person return weak. Let not a single person return burdened. Reach out in your glory. Reach out in your power. Reach out in your glory. Ah, go Father, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We lay our crowns. I just wish to continue there. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we lay. We, and we worship Oh, we live Eko parada satamaneve Oh, we live All of it, all of it, all of it 
all, all. Lord, we live. Yeah, Copra Nameka Savarahadish, Kapo Kepeladai. Lord, we lay it all, we. All of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. Oh Lord, we live. I thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Receive all the glory. Receive all the praise. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can I get an amen this morning? Give the Lord a mighty hand, everybody. First Samuel, First Samuel, uh, uh, uh. be upstanding, everybody. chapter 2 my rest is complete as I rest at your feet sweet spirit sweep over my soul my rest is complete as I sit at your feet, sweet spirit, sweep over my soul. My rest is complete as I sit at your feet, sweet spirit. Sweep over my soul My rest is complete As I sit at your feet Sweet spirit Sweep over my soul Sweep over over my soul, sweep over my soul, sweet spirit, sweep over my soul. My rest is complete as I sit at your feet. I kill a shadai. Over my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul, and sweep over my soul, sweep over my soul, sweet spirit, sweep over my soul. is complete as I sit at your feet sweet spirit all right first Samuel <laughs> sweep over my soul sweep over my soul sweet spirit Sweep over my soul My rest, my rest Is complete As I sit at your feet Sweet spirit Sweep over my soul My rest, my rest 
rest is complete as I sit at your feet, sweet spirit, sweep over my rest, my rest is complete as I sit at your feet, sweet spirit. him to do something right now so when you say it mean it you are you are inviting him you are inviting him you are inviting him you are inviting him my rest is complete as I sit at your feet sweet spirit sweet oh Ask him to sweep over your soul. Sweep over my soul. Sweep over my soul. Sweep over my soul. Lord, my rest, my rest is complete. As I sit at your feet, sweet spirit, sweet over my soul. Can you ask him one more time to sweep over your soul? Sweep over my soul. We ask you, dear Lord. We ask you, dear Lord, sweet spirit. Sweep over my soul. My rest, my rest, my rest is complete as I sit at your feet. Sweet spirit, sweep over my soul. My rest is complete. My rest. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. First Samuel 2, verse 26. Let's see how far we can go with this. So I can maximize another 25 minutes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. First Samuel 2, 26. Put it back up on the screen. First Samuel 2 verse 26. <clears throat> but the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with both, with both, and in favor both with the Lord and with men. And the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature. If I should play English with you and the boy Samuel continue to grow in stature and continue to grow in favor. Are we together? But the boy Samuel continue to grow in stature 
and favor both with the Lord and with men. We begin a series this morning for the short time we have left, Becoming Better. This is the part one. So we scratch the surface a bit. Remain standing for a while. We scratch the surface a bit and we see how far the Lord helps us. How many of us love growth? If your hands are down, I don't know what, what the problem is here. How many of you love growth? Is growth attractive? So what God is helping us to do in the next couple of weeks is position us for growth for becoming better in every way and all, at all times. I trust the Lord to minister and for his word to gain root in your heart this morning. In Jesus' precious name. Please now take your seat for a while. And greetings to our online family, those who are watching and joining us from across the cities, across the nations, on YouTube, on Facebook, on the mobile app. The Lord bless you richly. Thank you for being a part of this awesome experience. I believe that already from when we started, the Lord has been reaching out to you already. And please open your heart, get your pen, get your Bible. Let's have good church together. <clears throat> and the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with God the Lord and with people. Now, it is the blessing of growth. It is the blessing of growth. As you grow, you both enjoy the resources, the blessings, the access in God, and also you enjoy favor from men. You enjoy access to the heart of men. Many times people are strategizing, seeking for way. How do I have access to the hearts of men? Just grow. Just grow in your walk with God. As now you saw it in Samuel. And the boy continued to grow. He grew in stature. We could say spiritual stature. And he enjoyed favor. Both from the Lord and with men. So God expects. God looks out for growth. Jesus was upset. That the fig tree was not producing. God looks out for growth. God expects growth in the life of his children. And you see the parable in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew 24, Jesus was speaking of how the kingdom of praise, how the kingdom is likened. And he gave a parable in Matthew 24 from verse 14 down through 30. And in that parable we see how the master returned and he looked for growth. Talent given to five, responsibility to uh, five talent, five responsibility, two responsibility, two talent, two dollars, two rands were given, one was given to another. And when the master came, one of the things he looked out for, one of the things that made him glad, one of the things that made him disappointed was the presence of growth in some and the lack of growth in one. Are we together? So God wants us to grow. To grow in what he has given us. And to grow with what he has given us. Come on, are we together? To grow in what he has given us. There is something God has given you. Grow in it. Grow in grace. Grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. God wants us to grow in what he has given us. And with what he has given us. There's what God has entrusted in your hand. There's a business he's put you in. There's a career path he's put you in. He wants you to grow. But in what he has given you. Where he has placed you. What he has entrusted you with. Now as we look on the elementary level of growth. There are five areas you must grow. Amongst others, in the course of our teaching for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be looking at other dimensions and other expressions. There are five areas you must grow. Don't forget our focus is becoming better. Becoming better. There are five areas. The first, we must grow in our spiritual lives. We must grow in our spiritual lives. Not just grow in church attendance, grow in spiritual life. Now, let's explain this now. Growth in the spirit means the flesh is dead or the flesh is dying. Growth in the spirit. So how do I measure growth in the spirit? Is it that I know so many scriptures? How do I measure growth in the spirit? I can quote many scriptures. I attend that church. That man is my pastor. No, sir. Growth in the spirit means the flesh is either dead or the flesh is dying. That's how you know you're growing in the spirit. Mm. 
and the flesh must die for our spirits to come alive to God. The flesh has got, they can't cohabit. The flesh has to die for your spirit to come alive to the voice of God, to the dealings of God, to the instructions of God, to the directions of God, and to the resources of God needed to win, to rule, to dominate. So we must grow in our spiritual life. Now, the believer who is not growing in the spirit is not truly growing at all. You may think you are growing in finance. You are growing in business. You are growing in career. No, you are a believer. You are a child of God. The standard by which you are judged is different. The standard by which you are rated is different. The scale with which you are measured is different. The believer who is not growing in the spirit is not truly growing at all. Because when it comes to your growth, the beginning point of your assessment is the growth in the spirit. The beginning point of how you are rated. Is he growing? Is she growing in the spirit? And we said growth in the spirit means you are either dead to the flesh or you are dying to the flesh. The things I used to do, I do them. The things that I use, you know, ah, I, I thought I was doomed to this thing. Now I'm, I'm losing interest in them. You are either dead to the flesh or you are dying to the flesh. So the first area where you must be coming better every day. Improving every time. It's growth in your spiritual life. Are we together here? The second area where you must grow, where God wants to see growth, we must grow in our emotions. We must grow in our emotions. We must grow. Because listen, until you grow in controlling your emotions, you keep going back and forth, up and down, back and forth. And one of the testimony of growth in the spirit is that you don't become a slave to your emotions. It's a testimony of growing, growing, growing. It's, it's a never-ending process of growing in the spirit. You are no longer a slave to your emotions. You are not a slave to anger. You are not a slave to certain desires. Because now God does not want his children, take note of this now, to be slaves to anything. Whether anger, whether whatever emotion, he who the son sets free. He's free in all areas. God does not want you to be slaves to anything. There are people who are slaves to their emotions. Hey, when they get angry here. So a video, Pastor T. And now let me give balance to this old. Saw a video of a middle-aged lady who said she and her husband had some issues. Got so upset, got so angry. Broke the television set. Oh yeah. Broke the television set, began to smash the windows in the house. And I said that was not enough. She came down from where they were up. When God has taken you up, you want to go down here. Okay. She came down. I began to smash the car, finish the back, finish the front, finish. Like she was looking for something else. And guess what? When you interact with people, they say, no, what did the man do? No, no. That man must be a devil. To push a woman to this place. Listen, what is not in you is not in you. No. What is not in you is not listen when you've conquered the flesh emotions there are things you walk away from so when now why did i say that there are people who justify anger said the reason i did i did that they pushed me to the limit oh you have a limit normally i don't respond like that normally who the son sets free is god does not want you to be a slave to anything slave to anger and gets angry and the next thing gives the wife say no she disrespected me no, it is, it's fine you know what you do for that man take your car drive when the MPD stops you don't provide your license and they tell you park get out and slap that GMPD staff and say he, he got he, 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 he disrespected he said what is not in you is not in you 
a man who now let me say this here and this is not the message oh, but let's talk about it a man who has a reason to abuse his wife has a deeper problem than he knows you have a reason how do you feel that a woman God entrusted in your care you abuse her how do you appear before God there is no better way to define a beast a man who can, you, you violate your wife something kept under your custody a person you should nurture and you have reasons you have reasons and such a man who speak in tongues to who I'm not teaching because I got brief. Is that okay? So you don't say, ah, did my wife go and death? If, if this thing is pinching you, you are the one God is talking to. Say, wait, oh, wait, oh. What happened last night? How did you pass on? Eh, if, if it's that fresh, that means your deliverance came on time. Are we together here? No, justif no justification at all. Not to be a slave to your emotions. No, listen, no matter what life presents to you, they are alternatives. They are always alternatives. But to you, you are so weak that you believe that being beastly is the only option you have. Being beastly. It, 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 it gets me on the edge when I hear Christian men. And let's not talk about women for a while. You know, there are women who slap their husbands off. a sharp object, you must cause him hurt. You know, when, when you are sleeping today, you will see. How do you sleep? How do you sleep? Say, no, 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 I usually am not angry. Let them ask my family members, they know me. Hey, no, you didn't marry them. That's what marriage brings out. Are we together here? Becoming better with your emotions. Are we together here? Some men are not smiling, hey? You're not smiling, that means <laughs> you're not treating God's daughter well. Are we together here? But that's it. Until you grow with your emotions, you keep going back and forth. You rise today, you come down tomorrow. See what scripture says. Would you please help me? Proverbs 16 verse 32. Ah. And in case what you are teaching, someone watching from home, you're feeling guilty. God is talking to you. One way to know the voice of God, when it comes, it strengthens, it revives, it corrects. It reproves. The church is not an entertainment center where you come and they tell you what you like every time. No. I'm not an entertainer, I'm not a politician. You don't come here to feel good every time. You come here to get back in line. Get your vision right. Get back in alignment. Get back with the right language and get back in your work with God. That's when you know you went to church. Somewhere along the line you feel uncomfortable. But hey, God is talking to me here. That's church, my friends. Proverbs 16, verse 32. I, I'm, I'll see how far we can go with this. I mean, that's, I'm still scratching the introduction. Proverbs 16, 32. Now please give me the Passion Bible. Hallelujah. Those here, hallelujah. Proverbs 16, verse 32. Do you want to be a mighty warrior? Do you want to enjoy a voice in the land? It is better, this is the pathway, to be known as one who is patient and slow to anger. Now, do you want to conquer a city? Rule over your temper before you attempt to rule city. Rule over your temper before you attempt to enjoy influence. Rule over your temper before you pray about ruling over city. So, we must grow in our spiritual lives. <clears throat> we must grow in our emotions. We must grow in our thoughts. Yeah. We must grow. In our thoughts. Whew. Now 
you cannot keep thinking childish and backward thoughts. You can't keep thinking like a child. Saved for 10 years, still thinking like a two-month-old Christian. Been in church for 15 years. I can remember when I gave my life to Christ. It was about 12 years ago, but you still talk like a one-month-old Christian. Growth in your thoughts. First Corinthians. Are we getting something at all here? Hmm. When the voice is this low, that means I'm touching somebody. <laughs> hmm. Try something I'm looking for in First Corinthians. Mm, it's a second. Okay, wait, we'll find it. Is it first? There's a please, someone look for it for me. There's a scripture that came. When I was a child, I spake. Please help me look for it. Then he said, When I was a child, I reasoned like a child. He said, But now I've come to maturity. I have put childhood behind me. Can you find it for me, guys? I think it's first Corinthians something. Please help me. Ah, huh? I was close to it. Thank you. I just came now. First Corinthians 13 verse 11. Now please put it on the screen. Thank you very much. God bless your heart. Thank you. When I was a child, I talked like a child. And I taught the kind of things I think about. Not time to pray today. Not, not go to church this week. Not fast this month. That's what a child should be talking about. But when I became a man, that's piece of maturity, I stopped the childish ways. God expects growth in your thoughts. The kind of thought you think about yourself, about your generation, about the kingdom, about your work with God, about souls being saved. Growth in your thoughts. Now, whew, there is a level of thinking you grow into where it becomes easier to work with God. It becomes easier for God to deal with you. It becomes easier for God to pour into you. There's a level of thinking where the word of God, your prayer life, your fellowship with God has transformed you to where it becomes easy. It becomes easy for God to pour into you. It becomes easy to walk in faith. It becomes easy to obey God. At that point, that's maturity. You can now speak like a man. And a man here, we're not relating to gender here, was speaking of maturity. When I was a child, I speak like a child. The question I ask you now, and that's the answer to give to yourself. Compared to how long you've been saved, look at the kind of conversations that you have. Compared to how long you'll be saved. Now, it, now this is just a personal diagnosis. Compared to how long you've been saved, how much you know church language, look at the kind of thoughts you think about. Look at the kind of passion you have for the things of God. How can someone saved 10 years, 5 years have this kind of weak passion? When I was a child, I spake like a child. I taught like a child. I followed God like a child. But now I've come to the point of maturity. There should be some signs. There should be some expressions. There should be some reflections that you've come to the point of maturity. God expects growth. A thought life. God expects growth. God expects growth. Why is that important? The kind of thought you think will reflect in the actions you take. The kind of thought you think will reflect in the actions. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The kind of thought that stays in you will reflect in the actions that you take. Can I get an amen here? Number four. Number four. Another area we need to grow. We must grow in how we manage relationships. We must grow. There must be growth in this thing now. There must be growth in how we manage relationships. Is it a marital relationship, a business relationship, a friend, a family? There must be growth. Now, what are you at the smartest? People are important in our lives. You need people. 
It is not good for the man, for the woman to be alone. You need people. We must get better in how we manage relationships. And as we follow the wisdom of God in this area, we assess the path. We assess the resources needed to manage relationships. Now, let me say this to you. You have, and this is for couples. I don't know why I'm going into couples issues this morning. Whatever God is doing, let him finish it. Okay. <laughs> if you are in a marriage relationship, you know, serious relationships, marriage of a year, marriage of two years, marriage of five years, marriage of ten years, marriage of seven years, and you are having, please take note of this, you are having the same issues over and over again in the relationships, in the marriage rather, in the relationship, the same issues over and over again. Then someone is not growing. Chances are you are the one not growing. You know why it's important? Take personal responsibility for growth. Things will never be better if all you think about is that the next person is not growing. You know why? If there are issues repeatedly in a relationship, in a marriage, there's a pattern. If you are growing, you may not necessarily force your partner to change. But how you see their weakness start changing. How you see, you are growing, your perspective gets better. How you see their struggles start changing. So if the issues are repeating, it's like a cycle, it's not ending. Chances are someone is not growing, but expecting growth from the other. Are we together here? Number five. Is it number five now? <laughs> Another area God expects us to grow. We must grow in our attitude. We must grow. Please take note of this now. Attitude is powerful. It is popularly said that attitude is determines altitude that how far you rise how far you go will be a function of your attitude the attitude of a person are among the controlling forces of their lives the attitude of a person how far you will go in anything take note of this now is determined by your attitude to that thing how high you will rise in any area is a reflection, is a harvest of your attitude. Many never rise high in particular fields, particular endeavors, particular businesses, not because there is some external force. There is a terrible attitude to that thing. Growth in attitude. But you know the important thing to note here. People are not necessarily born with great attitude. A great attitude must be desired must be learned and must be developed. A great attitude, you learn it. First, you desire it. You desire it. I want to be better at this thing. If I improve my attitude in this thing, it will be better. My result will be better. Your attitude will require that you learn more. You train more. You are more patient. You are more understanding. Attitude in marriage. Attitude to people. Attitude to career. If you can fix the attitude problem, if you can fix the attitude problem, it's attitude that makes people sleep on their job. Attitude makes people deliver shabby products, shabby services, and are trusting God to fix issues. How far you will go in anything is determined by your attitude to that thing. Can you remember in Numbers 14.24? Numbers 14.24, popular scripture, how God testified about the attitude of Caleb. You can have an amazing prayer life and a terrible attitude. You can be all spooky spiritually, all vibrant, all energetic spiritually, but you've got a terrible attitude. It is not yet effective prayer if it's not fixing attitude. It is not yet effective as we appear before him. Something leaves us and something flows from him to us. Oh, is it Isaiah 41 or 40, 31? That day that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Now there's, there's a translation that says, they that, that, that look unto God shall find new strength. 
attitude is a reflection of strength or the lack of it. So as we appear before him, there is something in him that flows to us that makes us appreciate things better, walk at things better, look at things better, feel about things differently. God expects that we get better. Would you please help me? Let's look at Numbers 14, 24. How God testified about attitude or attitude. Then God said, and Caleb will enter into the inheritance and his children's children. Now give me that scripture, please. As I attempt to bring this to a close, I think I am... Um, Guys, can you help me? Numbers 14, 24, right? Numbers, 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 numbers. 14, 24. We'll wait for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, now this is amplified. Now, let's see the ICB. I'm looking for the translation that use attitude. Guys, look for it for me, please. Is it the NLT? Do you guys have the NLT there? Put up the NLT for me, please. Aha! Uh -huh. uh -huh. God bless who came with NLT this morning. Thank you. Because when I study, I, I look different translations and all that. So, all right, now look at it now. He said, But my servant Caleb, he has what? He has what? Than the others have. Now take note Caleb is a child of God, though. he's an Israelite. And God is speaking about other children of God. Allow me to put it that way. And God is saying, compared to my other children, hey, compared to my, I have scanned through the church. I have scanned through the city. I have scanned through the nation. But my servant, put your name there, has a different attitude than the others. Ah, he has remained loyal to me. Therefore, I will bring him to the land that he desired. I will bring him to the land he prayed for. I will bring him to the land he wishes to be in. I will bring him to the possession. He didn't stop there. Look at a man's attitude, what he did. His children will possess the ashe of that land. A father's attitude covered his children. Attitude is everything. God wants you to keep getting better in your attitude. Attitude to life. And I speak to men here. No matter what life throws at you, there's no reason to give up. The moment you become flattened by life, there's a lot of casualties. A lot of people will be affected by your lack of steam, lack of energy, lack of passion for life. No matter what life throws at you, to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. Are we together here? What you don't have today, as long as you don't give up, you have it tomorrow. Are we, are we together here? No matter what it is. Don't allow the expectations of people, of society, make you feel like you're not doing well. Don't allow it. Sometimes people want to compare you, rate you, make you feel you're too slow. Now, as long as your clarity is intact and your work with God is unbroken, then tomorrow is assured. Are we together here? And I'm speaking to men specifically. Too many times we have counsels coming to women. Men are hardly spoken about. We just expect the man to know how to figure it out. We just expect the man to know. The man is a provider. The man provides security. And men are dying in their prime. Men are committing suicide every day. They can't open up. Because sometimes opening up makes you feel like a failure. Because the person on the other side of the table does not know how to deal with opening up. Are we together here? So I'm speaking to men specifically. Nobody should make you feel. Now, 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 get your assessment from God every day. Draw your assessment. If he says you are fine, you are fine. If he says it is well, it is well. If he says tomorrow is assured, it is assured. Make sure that you are drawing your assessment from him. Because every other tongue around you can lie. Every other tongue around you can make you feel like you're doing nothing. Every other tongue around you can make you feel like you're not making any progress. As a man, you must learn how to draw your strength, your validation from God daily. Daily! When you look at the stats, it breaks the heart. Men push to depression. 
Because society is expecting from them too, too soon what they need time to deliver on. Too soon. The man is in his 40s. You already call him a failure. The man in his early 50s. You, you say, come, come, come. No, your mates have houses. Your mates. Whoever is doing better than you won't say that to you. And if you are not doing better than me, you have no right to say that to me. Are we together here? You have friends, you have family members, uncles, cousins. Ah, what are you doing with your life? Your mates are doing now. Please take note of this. Whoever is truly doing well will never, because they know the pathway to get in there, will never say that to you. And whoever has not done to that extent, what they say should not break you. What they say should not make you feel empty. Anyone who is truly doing well, all they will be giving you is encouragement. It's possible. Don't stop. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Don't give up. Don't speak fear. Don't speak negativity. Rise again. Keep pushing. God said, Caleb, will you rise on your feet, please? I think I'm done here. Rise on your feet, everybody. Caleb, now look at me for a while I don't know why God moved me in this direction this morning I have no idea it was not part of the plan but I believe God is speaking strength to someone God is speaking hope to someone he wants you to be better every day he's not expecting perfection from you but just keep going just keep going He's not expecting things to become great overnight. Just keep going. Just keep going. It can be one step at a time. One move at a time. Just keep going. He's not expecting it all to come together overnight. But nothing should make you drop the tools. Am I speaking here? Nothing should make you down the tools. Nothing should make you conclude on yourself. He wants you to keep getting better every day in your attitude. If he says it, it's possible. If he says this with me, then I'm not alone. If he says this with me, then I've got all I need. For the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The strength I need is supplied daily. The direction I need is supplied daily. Every man hearing me right now, please, whether physically here or virtually, you must learn how to validate yourself every day with God's word. You must learn it. It's not weakness, my friend. It's strength. Learn how to validate yourself. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There is nothing wrong about me. He holds me by the hand every day. I and day that God has given me. We are for signs and wonders. Ah, the part of the just is speaking of me. He gets brighter every day until he gets to the perfect day. Validate yourself every day. Don't wait for the world. Don't wait for the world. Don't wait for the world. Do it for yourself. Eat for yourself. Don't wait for the world. Eat for yourself. Don't wait for people. Eat for yourself. Speak to your hands every day. Speak to your legs every day. Speak to your eyes every day. Don't allow the pressure of life make you feel little. Talk to yourself every day. And this is for every man hearing me. I know it's the women's month, right? Ah. But God is speaking to the men in your life. Thank you. Thank you. It's important. God wants you to keep getting better. Would you just lift your voice and just worship the Lord for a moment, everybody? Can you just receive strength out of Zion? Just receive strength. The women, the men, pull strength. 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 Come on, pull strength! Pull strength! 
Receive strength. Receive strength. Receive strength. Receive strength. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Now everybody, you declare, whether you're watching or you're here, you declare this at the loudest that you can and you pray with this about 30 seconds. Can we do this together now? Can we do it together now? Say in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare that every day my life is better. I live forward. I live forward. I am making progress every day. Every day I am making progress. My life is better every day. I live forward. I live forward. I live forward. Open your mouth and declare that upon yourself. My path is as a shining. I live forward. It gets brighter and brighter. I live forward. I live forward. I live forward. I get better. My life is better. Every day from now on. My life. I live forward. Is getting a yak a palace. A baru kamarata. Ira bata yela barata. Eso feratela. Ima raba kamera so kaya kata. Shake the braga zopa. I get better in my actions. I get better in my emotions. I get better spiritually. I get better in my attitude. I get better in my mind. Rotela ba shayada. Relaka de bruka da gala baraka dosha. I declare that every day, by the power of the Holy Spirit, my life is better. The lebreka de baruka ba. I break through obstacles. I break through rejections. I break through resistance. My life is better every day. My path is clearer every day. My life is better every day. The brighter I shine. Selaka de bros. Salagadea Kalabate, Segadia Kosela Baragada, Rakoto Palagade Galega Braga, I make progress, I advance, I make progress, I advance, Sekaka Baraga, Kuta, in all areas, in all areas, by the Spirit of God, this is my life, this is my testimony, this is my passion, my life. Is better every day. Ye kelego do salaba lagada, ekrada mana malagada kazata. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Would you please, everybody present or online, stretch your two hands towards me? One of the prophets in Zion is that every time we appear before God, we return with strength. Uh, every time every time and they go from strength to strength each one, everyone appeared before him in Zion therefore this morning upon everyone hearing me right now I decree a release of strength a release of strength a release of strength let this strength speak in every area let it speak as clarity let it speak as encouragement let it speak as direction let it manifest as speed receive strength in the name of jesus i rebuke the force of discouragement whatever seems and seek to weigh you down i break that power now receive strength right now arise and shine Arise and shine. Arise and shine. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. Out of this encounter. Men and women are rising up. Men and women are taking positions. Men and women are rising up. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The weak become strong. The discouraged is encouraged again. The misaligned receive alignment again. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. Thank you, Father, for what you done this morning. Be glorified to them in these lives forever and ever. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can I get God's people giving the Lord a mighty hand? Strength has been released. Strength has been released. Strength has been released. In the name 
of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we push further in these next week Sunday. There's quite a lot. The goal that you become better. That's the goal. So please, let's go back to this message again. What are the five areas God wants me to grow? Spiritual life. That's the beginning point. That's the beginning point. My emotions. How I manage relationship. My attitude. God wants me to get better. Praise the name of the Lord. We blessed this morning. Give the Lord a mighty hand, everybody. All right, take us to the master's house. Our mandate is making real the Father's rest. Our vision is raise a people who love God and others, empowered to shine God's light every day and in every way. Join us for our special empowerment days. Sundays, 7.30 a.m. and 9 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, plus 2. Wednesdays, 6 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, plus 2. Our venue, The Master's House, The House of Rest, 28 6th Street, Weinberg, Santon. Join our live streams on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash mymastershouse and on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash mymastershouse. Visit our website, www.mymastershouse.com. Join us online every Monday morning for The Glory Experience with Dr. Sule Emanuel. Time, 5.30 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, plus 2. Zoom ID 869-3847-5868 Passcode GRACE Also streaming on My Master's House and Power to Excel mobile apps.